Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Darkness. It's been a while and there has been a new update to the game. The new update made it so that your characters can't exactly die. If your characters do die, you can simply wait a few days, log in, claim your revive anx, and then revive that character. But I still find it frustrating to start a game, not know what to do, and repeatedly die before you get that perfect and good run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 100 day run without reviving, and along the way I will share some tips and tricks on how to survive the early game. So as you can see, I'm starting a completely new game, and I'm gonna be selecting the adventure with a single totem just to simulate a completely fresh start. So let's start. Alright, first things first, pick up some branches, get some flint. Alright, so I have crafted my basic tools, I got my stone axe and my stone knife. And here's rule number one, before equipping anything, always check to see if they have enchantments or something. For example, I got a blessed stone knife minus one, which kinda means it's just a normal stone knife. And I've got a stone axe, however sometimes there could be negative enchantment and could be curse. Curse items will lower your stats permanently, so be careful not to ever equip them. Okay, I found a small fountain of health. So whenever you find special rooms like this, a fountain of health, purification springs, I highly recommend you store it into a bottle and save it for later use. That way you'll have kind of like a fail-safe plan in case you're on the brink of death and you got nothing else. Alright, here I am, first boss. Whew. So for this first dungeon, you want to rush through it as fast as possible. Early on in the game, you're basically contesting or your only threat is starvation. Even this first boss doesn't do much, you can easily beat him. Food is super scarce early game, so you wanna get through this early phase as fast as possible or risk running out of food. Okay, I got my workbench here and I've repaired the ruins of light. Now the second structure you want to build with your precious stones is neither the armor bench or the weapon bench. It's actually the fire pit. You want to save up until you have enough stones and logs for the fire pit. Okay, so why do we want the fire pit? Building the fire pit allows you to have access to the canopy. Once you have a canopy, you can build a straw pile bed which will give you access to straw sleeping bags. Now what the straw sleeping bag does is it allows you to heal more while you sleep. And considering that in the early game, your only source of healing would be possibly bandages scattered around the floor and food, sleeping to heal or naturally regenerate your health would be much more effective with a straw sleeping bag. You also want to craft a carrier right after you get your workbench so that you'll have more inventory space. I'm gonna go ahead and craft two. The inventory space provided by the carrier ranges from 10 to 16, I think. So I went ahead and made two in hopes of getting somewhere higher, but unfortunately, I guess I'm not lucky. Okay, I'm actually in quite a tough spot. Um, I found a room full of food here. And I also got a broken chainmail. I can repair that. But I've somehow gotten myself to a magic addiction tree. As with any disease or afflictions, once you're, let's say, debuff, uh, magic addiction, rabies, food poisoning, dizziness, flu, any of those debuffs, or status ailments rather reaches tier 3 it will slowly drain away your health and it will s stop your recovery of health but once it reaches tier 3 it will not get worse it will only it will heal by itself eventually but until then i'm in a bad spot Alright, a cleansing fountain. I'm not sure if this gives a healing potion or a purification potion. Um, either way, it's a powerful healing item. I'll take it.
Ooh, room of battle knowledge. Neato. Okay, pro tip. So whenever we get an unidentified potion and your health is okay, eat it. Apparently, drinking a potion is the only way to identify the potion. Applying it on your weapon does not count as identifying the potion. So when you see the same potion next time and you didn't drink it beforehand, um, it won't identify or recognize the potion. Oh god. Oh my god. I'm in a tough spot again, but I think I have enough resources to fight this next boss. Anyway, pro tip again, fighting bosses always pop down a campfire right in front of you. Um, this will allow the or this will make the boss take uh, fire damage every turn. I think yeah, that's all my that's all my torches unfortunately. So let me go ahead and craft another one. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now that the boss is about to die, all we have to do is step away. So that the boss doesn't die on the fire and cause all of the loot to burn. Okay, what do we got? We got Crest of Transcendence and that's about it. Oh god, am I running myself into a dead end here? Oh, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? Oh, no, 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 okay, time to pop my bandage. Now it's no time to skimp. Now is not the time to skimp back on all my resources. Gotta beat the crap out of these losers. Heal. Smack these losers to death, come on. All I wanted was some food. Jeepa labas. Is that too much to ask? <gasps> serval oh no 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 what is that serval doing there did i like pa ran past it because i ran through that direction earlier i'm gonna have to fight it if i want to go back oh wait do i no i don't it's a huge loop it's a huge loop de loop that's nice, that's nice. Whew. Okay, I just picked up another spell book. And it gives me Summon Fire Servant, Summon Shadow Servant, or Teleport. Now, the goal of this game is to survive, which means you'd want to pick Teleport. However, by summoning Shadow or Fire Servants, they could also act as a distraction while you run away. Since I'm going up against a boss, I would rather have a Servant to tank damage for me than to simply teleport around and waste my energy. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and pick Summon Fire Servant. Damn, I'm getting lucky with these. Another Fountain of Health, hell yeah. That would mean... Oh, a Cursed Healing Potion, but it doesn't matter. Upon drinking, a healing potion removes any debuffs and resistant to all debuffs for a period of time. So the curse is basically non-existent. Oh my god, what did you steal? Oh, what did you steal from me? You stole my shovel! You stole my shovel! You stupid goblin! Give me back my shovel! Let's close this door so monsters will not spawn on the other side of that door. When I'm sleeping. Another pro tip. 
Finally, after all this time, I gonna build an apprentice desk. The apprentice desk allows you to remove the curse on an item or identify an item in exchange for mana mode. And I'm kind of getting sick of my uh, cursed apple staff. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove the curse on that. Whew, I can now finally switch my weapons. I'm gonna keep the apple stuff around though because it has a healing ability. But other than that, I don't see the purpose of keeping that as my main weapon since I'm gonna focus on swords. So the most efficient way to use the Earth of Life scroll is to activate it within the center of a boss room. This will give it the most area for uh, vegetation to spawn. Ooh, a Lingji mushroom. Life-saving. I don't see a lot of food plants here, mostly herbs, unfortunately, but that is fine. Alright, it's time for a backpack upgrade. I've got two elven coins here for this lovely backpack. And now here comes the decision on what to get. Always think of the present. Don't think too far into the future because you might not survive until that point to be able to use the resources. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the steel bar and some iron ore. And since I still have some value left in these elven coins, I'm gonna go ahead and take these and why not take the earth element? My golly, what the frick is that? I have never seen that one before. Keep it blind, yes. Oh, what? whoops. Accidentally teleported it away. No, no, don't close the door. It's a giant tomb bug. Okay, it's not that strong. I thought it would be stronger, but it just looks big. Oh, whoa. Why is there another one? Are these things like common spawns? They're not strong, but they aren't weak either. If they keep spawning here, I might be in some serious trouble. Oh shoot, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, okay, you know what? Now's not the time to waste or worry about resources. All right, time for another pro tip, or maybe I should put this into my um, all special rooms video. Anyway, Whenever you encounter a magical anvil, I suggest listing that down in your memo. Uh, where is it? Uh, nope. Ah, yeah, level. So I'm gonna go ahead and type, uh, desolate middle two. This will help me remember that there is, a uh, wait, sorry, let me add something. Magical anvil. Confirm. This will help me remember that there's a magical anvil in Desolate Middle 2. The way the magical anvil works is that it will allow you to craft anything for free that is one tier lower than the highest tier you've unlocked. So I suggest holding off on the magical anvil until late game. Since crafting a weapon that's one tier lower than what you can craft is not really useful in the early game. Okay, time for another boss fight. Whew. Um, unfortunately, I did lose my healing potion, but I had to do what I had to do to stay alive. I still have my recovery potion, so I should be fine for this battle. I'm gonna go ahead and build up a campfire right here. Move the boss to the campfire. Summon my fire minion and start whacking away at him. Why not summon two fire minions? Why not summon three fire minions? Oh, you cannot summon anymore? That is fine. Are you coming for me or do I have to go to you? Since I can't exactly reach you, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some stuff at you. Ah, this is how fighting should be done. Beat him up. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Okay, his health is super low. Let's go ahead and walk away from the fire. Finish him off. And bada bing, bada boom, we got a bunch of new items. And our second tablet of light. So as you can see, there's two exits to the boss room now. Um, this is the dark relic. Don't pick it up. I made a video on that. Uh, never pick that up until maybe super late game. It's more of an end game type of thing. So don't mind that for now. Let's go ahead and collect our treasure. Ooh, an unidentified golden ring. I will save that magic essence. I'm gonna go ahead and equip these. Uh, okay, they're both not cursed, which is good. And I do not need this key anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that there. And we're back home, day 40. We're basically... We're almost halfway to the 100 day mark. We're doing well. No, 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 not that. Go ahead and... Wait, what? Oh, that's right. So I have to repair. <laughs> Sorry, I did a little mess up. Okay, so here's our second Ruin of Light. We're supposed to repair it here with two stones and the Ruin of Light. We've unlocked the garden. We've unlocked the bathroom. Magic torch, leather hut. Hell yeah. The kiln, meditation, study. Nice. Did we not unlock the goat pen? Hmm. Alright, now that we've repaired the second Ruin of Light, we've basically finished early game because we've already unlocked the garden, which is needed for uh, self-sustaining production of food. And now we have cooking. Hell yeah. Smoker and cooking pot. So when you cook food, it makes the hunger the food restore higher and it will allow it to restore hydration, energy, and a bunch of other effects. Now that we've reached this point, uh, our next priority would be to farm, which is to clear away the entire map. So for example, I got this strange forest here. I will have to clear away all the trees and plants and everything so that new food and new trees, new plants will regrow and to organize up my base there's no need to rush to get the ruin of light 3 or the second dimension tablet because right now we have sustainable means to keep ourselves alive and to get food i'm gonna go ahead and farm up a bit before we proceed with the storyline and i was literally wondering why this area looked kind of like a place that I could enter. It was being blocked by a tree. Oh my god, and he had a cooking bag. Alright, fishing tip, since I'm completely out of food. Whenever you're fishing, um, never ever go for the small fishes. Uh, they're simply not worth it. They have they provide even less food than a small piece of meat. In fact, the normal fish provides just as much food as a small piece of meat. The only other thing useful that you can catch is actually the contaminated pile or the ball of poop you see on the screen. Um, it can be used as fertilizer when you don't have manure to fertilize or plant a magic seed. Please be food. I'm actually very low on food right now. I only have like a single Kingsberry left. So please be food. Oh my god, you're a friggin' mimic. And the mimic's gone. Oh, what the? Holy cow, I just got an artifact blueprint from removing a single bale of bush or something. Single patch of bush. What the heck is, did I get? I'm assuming it's a sword. No. Maybe it's a heavy armor? Light armor? It's called Master of Battles. Oh, hell yeah. 
A two-handed sword. That's freaking amazing. Hell yeah. Okay, I have cleared away everything I needed to clear away. Um, let me just show you real quick, right? Uh, here we go. So I've cleared away these areas. By clearing away areas like this, you will allow new plants to grow. While most of the new plants that will grow are like trees and bushes, you will find wild vegetation, which is going to be a reliable source of food. I've also upgraded my equipment a bit. I didn't have that much materials, but I got lucky with the leather armor. And I also got a steel sword. And we're on day 66. We're two-thirds of the way through this 100-day run. At this point, you want to keep farming for resources. The dungeons from this point onwards will, will get deeper and deeper. And you can't exactly find food inside the dungeon unless it's a chest or a or a event room so you want to have a stockpile of food with you as you go down to explore dungeons before i proceed to do the next uh dimensional ruin i'm gonna level up a bit uh optimally you want to be at least level 21 optimally you want to be level 21 when you fight the next dungeon there's no stats or anything behind it it's just kind of my um, personal experience on what level I need to be. Also, when you're training for uh, mastery, I suggest you pour all your mastery into a single type. Don't spread it around because that will just make you weaker. Okay, so before I continue, um, there was a new update. So the update, the update made it so that it's easier to fight or your character is stronger now. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's probably this one. The attack damage increase based on level. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten any of that because the fighting system works in a way that you level up two times to get a point and when you invest a point into a certain type of mastery, let's say for me I chose sword, it will randomly give you one upgrade, I got a chain attack upgrade, a crit upgrade and somehow got like four uh, hit chance upgrade. Oh, and also, the update made it so that when a weapon gets a plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, I think it goes all the way up to plus 8. Each level added to the weapon increases the stat more, and the strength requirement goes down by a little, 0.1 or 0.2, something like that. Anyway, I'm on day 68. I just came back, uh, had a... We just finished our finals in school. My next goal is to clear the next dungeon which will give me the goat goat pen yeah the goat pen would be another good upgrade oh and a combat mechanism i forgot to mention is that your evasiveness decreases as there are more walls around you so for example i'm standing here there's one two three walls beside me right that would mean that my evasiveness drops by a certain percentage if and if I stand here in an open space with no walls around me, I will have a higher dodge rate. It also applies to enemies. If you want to fight the enemies, you want to make sure they're the ones standing beside a wall and you have as much open space as possible. It will allow you to hit them more and for you to dodge more. The best place I'd say to apply this mechanism would be in narrow dungeon hallways. Pro tip again! Let's say you want to repair your weapons but you don't really want to craft another um, sword just to repair your sword, right? You can go ahead and use a stick to craft a crude staff. It won't repair as much but it still works and that's ultimately what matters. Actually gonna go ahead and push to the next area which is the dense jungle. So starting this point, it's actually the mid game, it's not, it's no longer the early game. But since I promised 100 days, I guess I'm just gonna have to survive 100 days. So here in the dense jungle, you wanna be very careful with your temperature. Temperature is a bitch here. You can get a heat stroke and die. 
some options you have to cool down is by stepping in the water. It's a rainforest. It has crap ton of rain. Or to hide under a tree. Oh. Alright. Enhanced, ar enhanced armor. Ooh. I'm gonna save that. One thing that is very important to know is that scrolls are technically non-renewable resource. For every scroll you use, there is one less scroll in that certain run. The only way to get new scrolls is by either finding them in dungeons or crafting your own scroll. But the prerequisite to craft your own scroll is that you must have the scroll you want to craft. So let's say I want to craft Remove Curse. I must first own a Remove Curse, gather the ingredients, then I can duplicate my Remove Curse scroll at the apprentice desk. There is another way, which is if you dig enough bushes, there is a small chance for you to get a scroll, but there's like over 10 scrolls plus how small the chance is to get a scroll you'll probably not get the scroll you want oh my god my temperature is at 39 Whew. okay it's at 38 now standing in water ah <sighs> anyway i'm gonna go ahead and beam back home i got what i went for which was gears now that i have enough gears to craft a weaver i don't have to worry as much about my health and now I can transform my metric ton of hemp into linen. Hell yeah. I have 37, sorry, 27 bandages. Anyway, I'm gonna put away two stacks. Um, I'm gonna put away two stacks. I'm just gonna hold on to the 10 bandages as I wander around the world. With this, my friends, we've more than moved out of early game. With this, we're actually secure both on food and health, at least until we run out of either. We are pretty secure on that. I'm officially in day 90. We're 10 days away from hitting that 100 day goal. And I'm planning on pushing through the jungle. I do not have that much food, but I'm hoping that the jungle have some plants growing around. Maybe I can kill some animals for food also. potion increases attack for 200 but i've also drank the dark potion what happens when you drink a dark potion is that you turn evil and whenever you encounter sacred statues such as this one they will turn into a shadow soldier that will fight you because you're evil and they are sacred let me show you real quick hello yep there you are soldier spirits they're very tough, so in exchange for power, you will get more enemies, basically. Hiya. Uh... Well, we're on day 99. Um, just half a day away from the 100th day, which was our goal. I, I actually went through everything I wanted to go through in the, in what I consider as the beginner or the early stages of the game we had some really close calls i almost died and a side note it took me a while to actually compose this entire thing because i had to go through like i think eight or seven runs before i got this run where i actually survived to this point 
most of the time I die at 40, 30, or even on the first 10 days. There's a really big luck factor involved, so don't be discouraged if you can't get past the early phase. Because this is what the game's about, learning, uh, restarting and learning from your mistakes, and hopefully one day you'll also hit a good run like mine. I'm currently just patrolling around the base because we're about to hit the 100 days. Um, Any time now. Almost. Let's go ahead and start the fire. Quite hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and cook some food. Cordridge. And there we have it. We are officially at 100 days into the game. So there you have it. That's my beginner's guide. To reach a hundred days in the wild darkness. And till next time.